We are back with part two of paragraph six, chapter one of 1984, and we are going to resume our vocabulary list, starting with the word sagging. Then we will talk about swirl again, straggle, rubble, sordid, dwellings, and unintelligible. So let's get started with the word sagging. Before we talk about the word sag, I think it's important that we uh, define two things, loose and tight. You probably already know those words, but just in case you don't, you can take a look at these two pictures. One is a loose dress, and the other one is a tight dress. Now that that's pretty clear, let's move on to the word sagging. The word sagging means that something that once was tight is now loose, and that is usually because of age or because of use. So something that is new is usually very tight, but as it gets older and used, it becomes loose or not straight anymore. And that's what sagging means. You can also use sagging to talk about something that you expect to be tight or you expect to be straight, but it isn't. Now let's see how they use sagging in this paragraph, where it says, uh, the, this, let's see, their windows patched with cardboard and their roofs with corrugated iron, their crazy garden walls sagging in all directions. So the walls of the garden, you would expect a wall to be straight, but if it, maybe if it's very old, it has some places where it goes down, or maybe even in the middle, it goes out. And that is a sagging wall, probably because it's old. All right, just a reminder, the word swirl, which appears again, uh, is a circular motion. Swirling is a circular motion. It's always good to revisit words that we have already discovered because uh, that will help us remember them more. Have you ever watched a race or a marathon and you have the winners, you know, maybe the top 10 who come in first and then maybe you have a large crowd of people coming in next. One or two hours later you have those three or four people who are trying their hardest to, to finish, but uh, they're, they're very far behind. That would be me, by the way. <laughs> But uh, those are the stragglers, the stragglers. Usually it means people trying to catch up, people who are very far behind. Those are stragglers. Also, straggle can mean unorganized or not very neat. Or, and if you think about it, uh, if you think about the idea of the race, uh, those people kind of throw everything off because they're way far behind. Most of the people aren't even waiting for them anymore. So in the par in paragraph six, we have, uh, let's see, the plaster dust swirled in the air and willow herb straggled over the heaps of rubble. We'll talk about the word rubble in a moment, but the, the plants were kind of unorganized and covering something up. Looked a little bit strange. The word rubble refers to the garbage left when a building is destroyed. That's how it's usually used. So if you uh, see images of a war, you can see the destroyed buildings, all of the pieces and the street and the piles that are left after the destruction. That is rubble. It could also be when they destroy a building on purpose to, uh, before they clean it, you have a lot of rubble. That's uh, the, the remains of the building. So uh, if you hear the word rubble, usually it, it, it's because there, uh, a lot of buildings were destroyed and it's probably because of a war. So when he says the willow, uh, the willow herb straggled over the heaps of rubble, uh, some buildings were destroyed, probably because of a war, and now there are things growing, flowers and plants growing in between all of the, the, the leftover pieces. 
let's talk about the next two words together. Uh, first, let's, let's just read the sentence. It says, In the places where the bombs had cleared a larger patch, and there had sprung up sordid colonies of wooden dwellings, like chicken houses. Okay, well, uh, dwellings are places where people live. The, the verb to dwell means a place where, where things or people live. Uh, houses uh, are a specific kind of building. Apartments are a specific kind of building. building. Dwellings can be anything. You could dwell under a rock. You could dwell in a cave. Those can be dwellings. So a dwelling can be any kind of place where something or someone lives. And the word sordid could mean dirty or ugly or not right. It also means morally wrong. So when you say these are sordid colonies, they could be very dirty colonies. They could also be colonies where we look at it and we see, well, this isn't right. This isn't where people should be living. So we have the sordid colonies of wooden dwellings, very dirty, uh, unhealthy colonies of wooden dwellings. And because of calling them dwellings, we don't really picture houses or apartments. We picture maybe structures that aren't so solid or aren't so nice. Finally, we have the word unintelligible, which means can't understand. But in my opinion, when you use the word unintelligible, you are putting the fault on the person trying to be understood or the thing trying to be understood. So if somebody drinks a lot of alcohol, you may not be able to understand them. Their speech will be unintelligible. It's not your fault. It's their fault. Uh, also, uh, maybe if instructions are very complicated and you're trying to read them, when you say the instructions are unintelligible, it's not because you're too stupid. It's because the instructions are very complicated unintelligible instructions. So when you use the word unintelligible, it does mean you can't understand it, but it also means it's because of the other person, it's not because of me. <laughs> so in this sentence we have, uh, let's see, nothing remained of his childhood except a series of bright, tab bright lit tableau occurring against no background and mostly unintelligible. So he's trying to remember things, but he doesn't really understand them. It's not his fault. It's uh, the fault of his memory that he can't understand it. All right. That is the end of part two of paragraph six of chapter one of 1984. Now this is a really great time to go back over. Listen to the reading of, chap of, of paragraph six again. Uh, or maybe several times, maybe watch this video several times, and try to understand those words. Try to hear them, try to understand them in the context of the paragraph. That will really help. Also, repetition helps. So like I said, listen as many times as you like. And if you found this useful, if you, if you liked this video, if it helped you, please press the like button. And if you want more of this, if you want more exercises like this, more explanations, more discussions, then subscribe because I'm going to be doing more. And when you subscribe, that tells me that you liked it and you want to see more. Okay? Now, I will see you again very soon in Chapter 1, Paragraph 7.